Hello YouTube! Today we're going to talk about not fighting the tape and how this might be an ouchy move because man the moves have been fast and dirty and violent. If you remember where we picked up yesterday we were looking at hollow candles and the fact that there's not very many uh, actual hollow sorry full candles in this most recent push here. We're looking at the most recent push up here and we only actually have three solid candles which means we're closing lower than we open but now if we flip two a different way of looking at the S&P 500 or the E-mini futures. This is where the story gets very interesting because when we look now, we go to hollow candles. What do we have? Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. That is twice as many that are closing lower than where they open. So there's a story, right? There's two sides to every coin. And it looks like right now I am looking at this uptrend, which shows the overnight move. And we've bounced off this area every single time before. The problem now is that we're actually closing below, which means we might actually want to go back down to our 50 DMA. And that was the original template I was looking for. After we go higher and we fail to hold, let's remember what we looked at on the Dow. We looked at, okay, well, when we stop going up and we start going sideways, let's just resize this really fast here. Here we go. Um, after we stop going up and we start going sideways, what do we get? We get a slam down to the 50 DMA shortly after a golden cross. I'm seeing the same potential still. There is not yet confirmation, but man, are these guys good at manipulating the tape. Why? The, the VIX expired yesterday, and where do we close? We close at the low. We close at 18. Then what happened? So 18% flush down. Today, we're up by 10%. Man, these guys are good. So if they're so good on the VIX, are they also good on the S&P 500? Because this baby expires tomorrow. That is monthly OPEX. So stay tuned till the end of the video if you want to see all the notes on what we need to know to be prepared going into there. And if you're enjoying the video at any time, I would really appreciate if you could consider subscribing to the channel and smash that thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. All right, let's get these news articles out of the way, then we'll come back and do some more charting. Joe Biden talked about UFOs today. We're going to focus on the feds. We're going to focus on the economic data, and then we'll circle back and look at charts. Uh, Bullard, uh, continued rate, in rate increases would lock in slowing inflation. Bond market-based uh, expectations of inflation now relatively low. Um, economy growing faster than previously thought. Labor market is tight. Remains too high for inflation. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Being the bulldog. Um, we got a GDP revision again today to 2.5. Here's what's interesting. We look back in previous periods. Q1 is usually soft. We look here to, uh, right? We go to, let's just go to 2014, 0 0.34. 2015, 0 0.09. Basically nothing. Look at Q1 of 2016. 0.62. Look at Q1 of 2017, 0.16. Uh, Q1 of 2019, a 1.9, which means we just got the highest print other than 2019 that goes like all the way back a decade. Wow. And excluding the uh, 2021 area as well. So if we, if we remove 2019 and 2020, this is the strongest Q1 print. We have like going back to like, I don't know, like what is this here? Uh, we're going back to uh, 2013. That's like 10 years ago. Wow. Yes. And if you remember from the video yesterday, what I mentioned was that I don't really care what comes in here. I want to see what the reaction is on the tape. PPI came in really strong. That is a leading indicator for inflation. Jobs came in with a, uh, with a beat, which is bad, bad for stocks. So building permits missed, uh, PMI missed. PPI is the number I think a lot of people are focusing on, including James Bullard. Why? PPI means producer price index. CPI means consumer price index. So producers produce, they uh, they bring it to the store, and then you buy it. So when producers are paying more, that usually feeds through to higher prices for CPI, which means if producers who are producing are getting charged more, what do they usually do? They pass the cost on to you. That's why prices go up. So that is the reason why the market, I think maybe finally decided that, oh my God, is this finally bearish? But we have to keep in mind that there is a lot of play with options. So now let's look at the chain because with zero DTE every single day now or zero days to expiry, we're looking at the chain for today, the 16th on SPY. And uh, we know there's a lot of volume on here. It is pumping. So where do they close it? Basically at max pain. Close, close enough. What I want to focus on more is where the hot money is. That's for tomorrow or the 17th. Why? Because when we opened up the week, we talked about 412 being the area where we were at the money. And we were looking for roughly a $4.5 move lower or higher, which implied that we would be at about 
417, 418, or right back here at about 408, 409. So where is the interest? Well, it's between uh, four, uh, really 412 down to about 408. Oh, interesting. And where's the, where's the calls? 410 to 415 and probably even more, which means I believe that tomorrow we're either going to get a whole bunch of nothing where we just close flat or we're going to get a decisive move higher or a decisive move lower. Honestly, I'm unsure. So what I'm looking for instead is that if we're not going to fight the tape, I'm getting my first warning sign here. We might be going down on the daily chart. There's also elevated volume. Let's not read too much into this. We know that there's usually a big move or big manipulation going into OPEX. So whatever happens tomorrow, it's going to have to confirm on the weekly chart for us to truly believe it. And at least as of right now, uh, we're holding a higher high and a higher low, which means we're lower high and higher low, which means we have an inside bar or no clear direction. We are now with the low of the week, though. We closed out today at the low. That is not good. It is not healthy. But is this just the VIX move? I'm not sure. Please make sure to drop me a comment and tell me what you think. What I'm going to do now is actually show you the different chart from before because the reason why 408 is so important is because of the risk reward we laid out on the weekend video. But now we're going to zoom into a 15-minute chart just to see what's happening. So riddle me this. Did we move lower because of Bullard? Did we move lower because of uh, the UFOs, which Biden talked about today? Or is it just OPEX? I'm not sure. Um, I wish I could tell you. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But as we look here to the close, it happened around when Buller talked, also around when Biden spoke. It's also just around the close. So sort of power slamming, increasing volume, decreasing price. That's classic bullish, bearish. Where do we come back down to? Oh, my God. Right back down to 408. Yes, we still have an inverse head and shoulders. And because we're closing out here, it usually implies, implies downside momentum. So if we're going to go for a retest or potentially lose last week's low, it should be tomorrow. We close at the low of the week, and that should lead to more weakness. What weakness? We talked about it on the weekend video, and I will leave that for you at the very end if you want to watch it. So now, if we go to a few more charts, which I think are very interesting, um, what I note here is that DXY is up by 0.2. It's now over its 50 DMA. We look at VIX. It is approaching its 50 DMA. It's awfully close. So uh, Team Bear is starting to get some arrows in their quiver. There's just no confirmation yet. The two-year note, it's been on an absolute tear. There's a monthly bullish engulfing pattern here. It is over the 50, and it is pushing even higher. We look to the 10-year note, over the 50 and pushing off. These all add pressure to the S&P 500. We also have, uh, if we zoom out here on inversion, man, we're like at record inversion, which means the two versus tens. If this confuses you, um, what people usually call this is the recession gauge. Usually, 12 months after we get inversion, which means a reading over 1.0, um, usually within 12 to 18 months, we have a recession. I just showed you that at least for Q1, there is nothing happening which shows us weakness. Here's a few more charts that I'm looking at just for clues here. Bitcoin, green on the day. Now it looks like a failed breakout. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to shake out. We just saw some uh, some charges for, I think it was Terra Loon. Um, so I'm not sure if it's moving lower on that or if it's just risk off. Ether is also now moving lower. It was green for a large part of the day and now it's reversed. Then we look to the markets, the markets that, that are the most beaten up. And what do we note? We got FXI, or sorry, emerging markets here, crash lining on the 50 DMA, trying to bounce with a golden cross. That is exactly what we laid out on the Dow, where we could be coming back down for a crash lining on our 50 DMA shortly after a golden cross. We also looked at FXI. What did it do? Ah, uh, roughly the same thing. Crash lining on the 50 and then TBD. I'm not 100% sure. So I think if you want to have more information, I would highly encourage you to watch the weekend uh, deep dive, which should now be queued up. It should be right over here on the left-hand side. And if not, come hang out with us tomorrow for the final hour where we're going to stream and walk you through the last 60 minutes of trading. If not, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.